Can you smell the donuts? Behind me is legendary donuts. Hi, I'm Arnie and this is eBike Advocate. And if you're into e-bikes and if you're into rides and reviews, why don't you consider subscribing? Just click that big subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you won't miss anything. Give us a thumbs up. Uh, leave comments, that whole thing. Today I'm in Orting, Washington and we are riding the Foothills Trail from Orting up to Buckley, which is, I believe, kind of southeast-ish of here. Now, the Foothills Trail does go the other direction also. It goes all the way to Puyallup Sumner area. In my estimation, that is not as enjoyable because there's a lot more subdivisions you have to pay attention to driveways and so on so we're not going that way i've got the bike unloaded let's go for a ride i've mentioned in other videos from time to time that my wife and I used to live on the western side of the mountains. And we didn't live too far from here. I mentioned earlier that the trail went the other direction, kind of in a north, northerly, let's just say that, direction towards the, the towns of Sumner and Puyallup. Well, we used to live in Sumner and I used to ride this trail boy multiple times a week and uh, this is it's just a great trail to ride as I mentioned earlier the going the other direction isn't as much fun because of all the driveways and the subdivisions and that kind of thing you constantly have to be worried that somebody's going to pull out in front of you. This direction is hi is much more let's call it bucolic. That's a word I don't know that I've ever used. Bucolic. Anyway, it, it uh, much more countrified and uh, pleasant you have fewer people on the trail all in all it's just a much more pleasant ride this direction now that does change a little bit when the salmon are running because we're going to be going along the river here for a while and uh, there's a portion of this trail just coming up right outside of Ording that is very popular for fly fishermen and trying to catch salmon in the fall that uh, this this trail will be packed with people who are wanting to fish and uh, <laughs> there, there, there have been a couple of times when I've been worried that some flyer fisherman would snag me on the backstroke of their of their cast, and because uh, it does get that full, and it, and you're pretty close to the river too. And you know, if you've ever watched fly fishermen, the line is pretty long it's a great
fall day here in the Puget Sound area. Just can't ask for anything more. I'm not, I'm just I'm on a real slow pace this morning because it's so nice. Only doing 10 miles an hour in eco mode. And where those two women just came back out on the trail, this is the area just to the left here. You can see the river. And uh, yeah, this place will be lined with people casting into the river. And you can see how close some of them can be. This is, uh, we're going, as I said, we're going uh, southeast-ish, I guess it would be. We're headed in the general direction of Mount Rainier. And uh, this valley is right in the Lahar zone. If Mount Rainier ever erupts like Mount Helens did back in the 80s, this part of Washington would be under all the Lahar again and uh, it would be wiped out. Uh, there are escape routes out of the valley to try and uh, avoid being uh, inundated, I guess would be the word. And so we're, you know, we're, we're right along the river, we're crossing over. There's a couple of little bridges, some nice, just very scenic in places. It's one of the nicest rides, in my opinion, and that's the one that counts because I'm the one who's talking right now. Uh, in Western Washington. And this ride from Ording up to Buckley, I think it's about 12 miles roughly. From Ording to Buckley, it is the uphill. And uh, so coming back is a lot, uh, you know, I guess it depends on where you park. Oftentimes I park in, in Buckley, coming over from the other side of the mountains and then ride down to Ording, but felt like changing it up a little bit today. Haven't been over here now and to this trail for a couple of years. This may be the last ride on this side of the mountains 
this year. I know there's rain forecast in a couple of days for here. And that's not to say it might, you know, that it couldn't get nice again, but it's getting close to the rainy season. Which, if you know Washington, western part of Washington State, is the better part of the year. <laughs> Although, not so, not so rainy these days. And you know, people talk about how much it rains in this part of Washington State. But, you know, really, it's generally a light rain. There are places that I've lived that when the sky opens up, it opens up. You can't see. The rain is so heavy. Well, that isn't the way it rains here. It might be constant, but it's usually not very, not very heavy. I say usually, and you know, there's always exceptions. So this is my first ride in, oh man, almost two weeks. Has it been that long? Well, can't remember now. But uh, like the day after I did my last ride, I was home, sitting, and I stood up and my right knee, that was like, I was, I don't know, like somebody had taken a, you know, hit me with a hammer or something on the outside of my right knee. It, it just almost knocked me off my feet. The pain was so, so bad. And uh, that was about nine o'clock. So, I could barely make it to the bedroom. It was hurting so much. And uh, so, I thought, okay, well, I'll sleep on it and see. Now, mind you, I didn't do anything. I just got up out of the chair. But uh, it was still bothering me big time. By the way, this area right here, I don't see them anymore used to be ostriches and buffalo in here. Don't know if they still have it. So at any rate, getting back to my knee. Oh, it still has buffalo on the little fence thing there. Um, The next day, I think it was Saturday morning, we went to the emergency room. And as was expected, they couldn't say anything. You know, it's, if, it's, if it's not a break, then X-rays don't do any good, and uh, they said, "Well, we'll give you some anti-inflammatories, and if it doesn't ease up in a couple of weeks, <laughs> like, like I was going to wait for a couple of weeks, then uh, go see an orthopedist." And, uh, you know, you might need an MRI, whatever. So, obviously I am on my bike, so it must have gotten better, right? And that's the case. It it's, still gives me twinges, but more so when I walk. So...
let's just keep our fingers crossed that I can keep riding this stretch we're on right now it's always in the shade and it's always many degrees cooler through here and if you're riding in the uh, late fall winter early spring you really have to be careful going through here this stays slippery for quite a long time. Now, uh, one of the viewers of this channel mentioned that they were going to ride some of the rides that I had, uh, that I've been sharing. Um, I don't know exactly where they're from, but it sounded like they were traveling and they were going to do the uh, oh the trail in Oregon that I did recently, and then uh, we're planning on coming up and doing the trail that I did last last video on the um, Chehalis Western, which I thought was pretty darn cool. And uh, this particular ride in, you know, terms of driving and is pretty close to that. It's just north of the Chehalis Western, north of Lacey. So, you know, it, it's, it's pretty close relatively. On your left. I didn't real <laughs> didn't realize I had my assist bumped up. I must have hit it accidentally. Anyway, I was kind of cruising along at a pretty rapid clip there all of a sudden. Now, one of the things I've never talked about, at least that, not that I can recall, is how I go about recording these rides. And uh, I've used a couple of different cameras over the last couple of years. For a while, I used the uh, Osmo Pocket mounted to my chest 
and uh, that was okay. that was pretty good. And then I used two um, GoPro eights, I believe they were, for a while, and uh, you know everybody knows about GoPros. I didn't like them much. And uh, so I've been using the Insta361X2 for quite a while now. And uh, I just love it. It's, it, you know, you don't have to worry about whether your camera is mounted just so. That was what actually made the pocket nice too, is you, it was on a gimbal and you didn't have to worry too much about it. But, uh, the Insta, you know, because it's videoing everything around, you just ride and you choose your shot afterward when you're editing it. Now it does, it does make the editing process more lengthy by quite a bit, but it's just so nice. Not worrying about whether you've got the angle just right, because I can do that when I'm editing, I can change it to point to things of interest to one side or another. So, all in all, I think it's just great. Now, it may not, you know, I mean, it may not be the best image quality but boy when I look at it on YouTube it looks good to me This path is in, still in really good shape, boy. There have been a, only a few places so far that have had any roots pushing up. So that's really nice. Don't you just love it? I mean, Here we are, early fall day. It's uh, 11 o'clock and the shadows are long. It's just great. Nice temperature, upper 60s, lower 70s enjoying the ride so much I almost rode off the trail there. Oh, somebody in the distance, you can't see them, driving a orange 60-something 
MGB. One of my favorite cars when I was when I was a kid. That and the TR6, the later. versions of the TRs from Triumph. God, I love those cars. And uh, in the early 70s, I was living in the Chicago area, and I wanted a TR6 so badly. I found my way into the dealership, I don't know, somewhere near to Chicago, and uh, I couldn't even get in the thing. There was no way. It was. They are so narrow. I. I no matter what I did, I couldn't. I couldn't get in. To it. I eventually ended up getting a Porsche 914, which was pretty much a joke, too. You have to imagine the shifter in the, the first gear was off by itself, where a reverse might normally be. So I had to, fortunately, my legs were bent a lot. I had to pull the stick underneath my leg. Pull it over and under. <laughs> it was pretty stupid. But you know how you are when you're young. Now coming up is on the, oh, where is that now? On the left hand side here is a nice little espresso stand. I've forgotten what it's called now. Trailside espresso. Look at all the people parked. Pretty cool, eh? And they have pretty, pretty good coffee. I mean, it's a, it's a popular place to stop. They must, you know, during cycling season, they have to do a ton of business. On a day like today, you could see there was maybe 30 people there. And for a... And for a tiny little town like South Prairie, that's pretty darn cool. Oh, there's a second one. It's like I said, it's been a long time since I've ridden over here. And back over my left shoulder, there's another one there trying to kind of usurp the business, I guess you'd say. This is where this trail used to end. When we moved out of here in this area back in 2008, this was as far as you could go. And they were in negotiations with this motorhome place here, this motorhome campground. I don't know how they finally came to an agreement, 
but I think just about everybody is glad they did. I mean, if you're into motor homes and stuff, this is a pretty nice place. And you're, you know, you're right on this trail, so you can get some exercise. There's coffee places down there. You know, you're not gonna, in the winter time, you're not gonna uh, sit out because you can't, they're, they're just basically drive-through places. So at this point, we start to climb a little bit more as we start to go up to the Enumclaw Plateau. And we're just having a nice, easy cruise today. Doing about, oh, 13, 14 now from what I was doing earlier. <sighs> Somebody's been out here on a horse and you're not supposed to be. I guess it's not surprising. So as I was saying, we're climbing a little more steeply now to get up to the Enumclaw Plateau, Plateau where the town of Buckley, oh, I guess they call it a city. You'd think I'd know that. <laughs> After all, I, I did teach there for 20 plus years. And uh, so this trail, like we're on the newest part right now, it was finished a couple of years ago, and it goes up onto the plateau and goes just a little bit past Buckley to the White River. And I'll show you that when we get up, get up there. And uh, that's where it stops because they haven't had the funding to build a bridge. So the, the trail or the uh, rail bridge that crossed the white to service this rail trail. Uh, I don't know if it washed out or what, but it's impassable and it may not even be there anymore. So they have to build a trail just for this. What did I say? A bridge just for this. And uh, that like anything like this, it took them a while to get funding from different sources. I looked it up a while back and uh, it was a huge amount of money, many millions. To accomplish it. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was a lot of money. So it's nice that they finally got the funding all in place, permits, whatever all else they need. And once that's done, the trail will be 
another couple of miles longer and take you into Enumclaw. The trail on that side isn't very attractive. It's been there for quite a while. It runs, oh, maybe 20 yards or so off to the side of the of the highway, a very busy highway. So it's not pleasant, but it will add a couple more miles. And if you're into riding for fitness, an extra couple miles is kind of nice. So here's one of the Oh, what's the word I'm trying to use here? It escapes me right now. Trestle? Yeah, trestle. One of the trestles along here. Over the valley down below. There's a couple like this. As we get closer to Buckley, probably notice that it's not wood the, the surface of the bridge isn't wood they've paved it so that's that's nice because it would be very very slippery uh, given the wet nature of this area it would be very slippery to ride with any moisture things I think that makes this more enjoyable than the Yelm to Nino and the Chehalis Western is because it does have some more open vistas and it's not just a straight shot. It's, it curves around and climbs and gives you those trestles So it's all in all a more visually appealing ride than those two, which is not to say I didn't enjoy them, but you know, you got to pick your favorites. Still climbing. Ooh, somebody just put in a nice place over there. Might be able to see it there. Yeah, a little bit of a view through there. Dang. On your left. probably saw the stop sign there so you do have to pay attention out here too and uh, you can see these two guys getting out of the saddle it's climbing a little bit more 
that right there is why I can't ride a road bike anymore. I cannot stand on the pedals with my uh, left leg. And I've talked about that on other videos. The damage that I received from being hit by a car back in the 90s. Wow. This is a Monday. The 26th of September? Yeah, 26th. I've never been on this trail with so many other cyclists. Pretty amazing. It's nice that everybody's enjoying it. Welcome to Legendary Donuts. Let's go in and see what they have available. Hello. How are you today? Good. Okay. Oh my. <laughs> such <laughs> such choices. Such temptations. Well, have to try. I'm gonna have to try Bill Gates, I think. Make it two of those. And uh, chocolate old fashioned. All right. And an apple fritter. And an apple fritter. Perfect. I wasn't counting, but I think that was four. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thanks. Legendary was kind of out of stuff. They usually have a bigger selection, but it's going to be good nonetheless. Hey, if you like this kind of stuff, make sure you subscribe if you haven't. Give us a thumbs up, you know, leave a comment, all that good stuff. Thanks so much for coming along again on one of these rides. We'll see you in the next one. It's bright out here and it's gotten warm. Thanks.